Happy Halloween, everybody. I'm so happy that it's finally Halloween, and I'm so excited to say that you guys will be spending some time with yours truly for this year's Halloween special. So, for this year's Halloween special, I'm very happy to say that I will be reading you guys a very scary story. What scary story this might be? One with horror. Teenage angst. Go to sleep, 2012. So as you could see, because it's Halloween, I'm dressed up for the occasion. And this year, the guys and I were all going as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle characters. So of course, I decided to be Casey Jones, specifically from the 2012 series. Originally, we kind of had trouble coming up with a group costume this year. I was suggesting for us to do Beetlejuice 2 theme, so I would be Beetlejuice and then everyone would be like my employees. I suggested for EJ to be Bob. I feel like he gives Bob vibes, you know, but... Everyone wanted to do a Ninja Turtle group costume. Everyone was suggesting for me to be Raphael, which I don't understand why. I clearly am Casey Jones coded. I mean, any version of him, I'd pull that shit off. You know for a fact I'd pull it off. I specifically chose to be the 2012 version because I feel like it's kind of self-explanatory. He's He gives emo vibes, right? It's not just me, right? But that can't be right though. 2012? Listen, I'm a really big fan of the 2012 Ninja Turtles series, but it could have been 2012, right? I mean, it's 2014 right now. So that means that the show came out two years ago. No, that can't be right. Maybe 2002, possibly? What does he say? Hey, Jeff, you're doing that thing again where you say that it's 2014. It's 2024 right now. What? Okay, fine, it's 2024, I made a mistake one time. Oh, God. Aren't you supposed to be busy getting ready? We have a Halloween party to get to. How about you go finish getting your costume ready and make sure the other guys are ready? Oh, hey guys. Hope you're all having a great Halloween. You know, happy Halloween from me. I'm Michelangelo this year, Mikey, the party guy, you know, cowabunga, booyaka shot. Stop, no, this is my Halloween special. You get your own Halloween special. Hey, bye, go get ready. Then you wonder why we were telling you to be Raphael. <sighs> oh, all right, guys, okay, I gotta go. But, um, you know, enjoy your Halloween. It was great, great seeing you guys. Bye. <sighs> I'm trying to steal my spotlight. So let's get to reading this story, shall we? So because this is a story online, as in creepypasta.com, uh, I have to read this on my iPad, which to be fair, is not exactly the coolest, most aesthetic way to like see me read something. I look like an overgrown iPad baby. So we're gonna try something different. We're gonna try to change things up a little bit, make things look a little bit more aesthetic. All right, so option one, let's see if this could work. A little awkward. All right, I think that's more fitting. Oh wait. There we go, now it's perfect. So get ready for this wild ride. And I hope that you guys enjoy listening to this horrifying story filled with the horror of teenage angst. If the teenage angst scares you at any points, just know that I'm here with you. Okay, you're every step of the way. Don't worry. Excerpt from a local newspaper. Ominous unknown killer is still at large. After weeks of unexplained murders, the ominous unknown killer is still on the rise. After little evidence has been found, a young boy states that he survived one of the killer's attacks and bravely tells the story. I had a bad dream and I woke up in the middle of the night, says the boy. I saw that for some reason the window was open, even though I remember it being closed before I went to bed. I got up and shut it once more. Afterwards, I slowly crawled under my covers and tried to go back to sleep. <laughs> That's when I had a strange feeling, like someone was watching me. That's not creepy at all. I woke up and nearly jumped out of my bed. There, in the little ray of light, illuminated from behind my curtains, were a pair of two eyes. These weren't regular eyes. They were dark, ominous eyes. They were bordered in black and just plain out terrified me. That's when I saw his mouth. A long, horrendous smile that made every hair on my body stand up. I know I'm supposed to strike fear into people, but that is actually kind of insulting. I would say my eyes are stunningly horrifying and my smile is gorgeously terrifying. I am 
offended on behalf of this version of Jeff. So rude. Anyway, the figure stood there, watching me. Finally, after what seemed like forever, he said it, a simple phrase, but said in a way only a man, a madman could speak. He said, go to sleep. I let out a scream. That's what sent him at me. He pulled up a knife. Pulled out a knife, but aiming at my heart. He jumped on top of my bed. I fought him back. I kicked. I punched. I rolled around, tried to get to knock him off me. That's when my dad busted in. The man threw the knife. It went into my dad's shoulder. Disrespect to knifey. Come on, Jeff. Wow, that's really disrespectful to your wife. The man probably would have finished him off if one of the neighbors hadn't alerted the police. They drove into the parking lot and ran towards the door. The man turned and ran down the hallway. I heard a smash, like a glass breaking. As I came out of my room, I saw the window that was pointing towards the back of my house was broken. I looked out to see him him vanish into the distance. I can tell you one thing. I'll never forget that face. Those cold, evil eyes and that psychotic smile. They will never leave my head. Once again, what you should be saying is, oh my god. That man was so hauntingly beautiful. Oh, shit, shit. You know what's one thing that I find hard to believe is that a little kid was able to speak with such cadence and such sophistication. In reality, I think it would have been, oh, so this guy with a wig came into my womb and he tried to kill me with a, a knife. And then my dad came in, my daddy came in and then he threw a knife at him and then he went out. Police are still on the look for this man. If you see anyone that fits the description of the story, please contact your police, your local police department. Jeff and his family had just moved into a new neighborhood. His dad had gotten a promotion at work and they thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighborhoods. Jeff and his brother, Lou, couldn't complain, though. A new, better house. What was not to love? As they were getting unpacked, one of their neighbors came by. Hello, she said. I'm Barbara. I live across the street from you. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself and introduce my son. She turns around and calls her son over. Billy! These are our new neighbors. Billy said hi and ran back to play in his yard. Well, said Jeff's mom, I'm Margaret, and this is my husband, Peter, and my two sons, Jeff and Lou. They each introduced themselves, and then Barbara invited them to her son's birthday. Jeff and his brother were about to object when their mother said that they would love to. When, his Jeff, and his, when Jeff and his family were done unpacking, Jeff went up to his mom. Oh, God. Okay, here I am. Here I am. Oh, my gosh. Start of the show. Mom, why would you invite us to some kid's party? If you haven't noticed, I'm not some dumb kid. Wow. First words we get from young Jeff, and he is already being sassy. And super emo. Oh my gosh. Like, oh, mom. I'm too cool to go to that kid's party. I'd rather be in my room listening to My Chemical Romance. Oh, you don't understand me. You don't understand me. No one understands me. Oh, don't look at me. I'm emo. Trust me. I've been there. Jeff, said his mother. We just moved here. We should show that we want to spend time with our neighbors. Now, we're going to go to that party. And that's final. Jeff started to talk, but stopped himself, knowing that he couldn't do anything. Whenever his mother said something, it was fine. Why is her name Margaret? Her name should be Karen. He walked into his room and plopped down on his bed. He sat there and looked at the ceiling when suddenly he got a weird feeling. Not so much pain, but a weird feeling. He dismissed it as some random feeling. He heard his mother calling down to get his stuff and he walked down to get it. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The next day, Jeff walked downstairs to get breakfast and got ready for school. As he sat there, eating his breakfast, he once again got that feeling. This time it was stronger. It gave him a slight tugging pain. And he once again dismissed it. He couldn't have worded this like, could the author not have like worded this like any better? Like that's not how you become a serial killer. That, that's not how things work. You just, oh, I have a strange feeling. Oh, sorry, officer. I just had a strange feeling. As he and Lou finished breakfast, they walked down to the bus stop. They sat there waiting for the bus. And then all of a sudden, some kids on a skateboard jumped over them, only inches above their laps. What, does Tony Hawk live on their street or something? They both jumped back in surprise. Hey, what the hell? The kid landed and turned back to them. He kicked his skateboard up and caught it with his hands. Oh, he's so cool. The kid seemed to be about 12. One year younger than Jeff. Ah, uh, yes, 12 and 13. Prime time to be an edgy, angsty teenage boy. Love it. He wears an Aeropostale shirt and ripped blue jeans. 
Because again, this story was posted in 2012, so like authentic. My God, I love it. Well, 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 looks like we got some new fresh meat. Suddenly, two other kids appear. One was super skinny, and the other was huge. Oh, I don't feel comfortable reading that. Well, since you're new here, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over there is Keith. Jeff and Lou looked over to the skinny kid. He had a dopey face that seemed to, that you would expect a sidekick to have. Imagine that's how you get described. Like, oh yeah, there's my buddy Keith over there. Yeah, yeah, you know, the one with the dopey face that's super skinny. He looks like a sidekick. What kind of description is that? And he's Troy. They looked over at the fat kid. Oh my god. This is like really cruel. Like, I actually don't want to read this. Okay, listen, I know I'm Jeff the Killer and I'm e evil and stuff. But this is really mean. We're like talking about a kid that's like 12 years old. I don't, yeah, I don't feel comfortable reading that. We're gonna, we're gonna skip past that. Just, and I, said the first kid, am Randy. Now, for all the new kids in this neighborhood, there's a small price to pay for bus fare. If you catch my drift. Of course, we have a typical Randy being Randy. He's just a typical asshole. I mean, the version that made me the way I am today, like the one in my universe, freaking psychopath. Jeez, man, you think I'm bad? Oh my God, Randy. If I didn't become Jeff the Killer, I honestly think that the version of Randy from my universe would have become Jeff the Killer instead. Lou stood up, ready to punch the lights out of the kid's eyes. When one of his friends pulled a knife on him. Aren't these kids 12? Oh my gosh. Was I like this when I was 12? No, not quite yet. I would have hoped that you'd be a bit more cooperative. My Randy voice is going to be all over the place. I'm just warning you. But it seems we must do this the hard way. The kid pulled a walked up to Lou and took his wallet out of his pocket. Jeff got that feeling again. Now it was truly something wrong. A burning sensation. Why couldn't we have worded this in a different way? Like, was there no other better way that we could describe this? Oh, whatever. He stood up, but Lou gestured him to sit down. Jeff ignored him and walked up to the kid. Listen here, you little punk. Give me back my bro's wallet or else. Randy put the wallet in his pocket and pulled out a knife. Oh, and what will you do about it? Just as he finished the sentence, Jeff popped the kid in the nose. Holy shit. Go, Jeff, go. Oh my God. Go, emo boy, go, 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 go. As Randy reached for his face, Jeff grabbed the kid's wrist and broke it. Oh my God. Randy screamed and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rushed at Jeff, but Jeff was too quick. He threw Randy to the ground. Keith lashed out at the him. But Jeff ducked and stabbed him in the arm. Oh my god! Talk about overpowered. Keith dropped his knife and fell to the ground screaming. Troy rushed him too. But Jeff didn't even need a knife. He just punched Troy straight in the stomach and Troy went down. As he fell, he puked all over. Lou did nothing but looked at Jeff in amazement. Not horror? I'd be horrified if this happened. Jeff, how did you... Was all he could say. They saw the bus coming and knew they'd be blamed for the whole thing. So they started running as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driver rushing over to Randy and the others. As Jeff and Lou made it to the school, they didn't dare tell what happened. All they did was sit and listen. Well, because they're at school, I sure hope so. Lou just thought of that as his brother beating up a few kids. But Jeff knew it was more. He stabbed somebody and broke somebody else's wrist. That is not normal. This is coming from me, okay? If I'm saying this is not normal, like, that's not normal, dude. Like, maybe you should be a little bit more concerned about your brother. But Jeff knew it was more. It was something scary. As he got that feeling, he felt how powerful it was. The urge to just hurt somebody. He didn't like how it sounded. I don't like the way it sounds either. Jeez. But he couldn't help but feel happy. He felt that strange feeling go away and stay away for the rest of the day. Even as he walked home, due to the whole thing near the bus stop. He couldn't even take the bus. Um... And how now he probably wouldn't be taking the bus anymore. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. He felt happy. He got home and his parents asked him how his day was. And he said, in a somewhat ominous voice, It was a wonderful day. Next morning, he heard a knock at his front door. He walked down to find two police officers at the door. His mom looking back at him with an angry look. Jeff, these officers tell me that you attacked three kids. That this wasn't some regular fight. And they were stabbed. Stabbed, son! Jeff's gaze fell to the floor, showing his mother that it was true. Mom, they were the ones who pulled the knife on me and Lou. Not to be the grammar police, dude, but Lou and I. Son, said one of the cops, we found three kids, two stabbed, one having a bruise on his stomach, and we... One of them broke his wrist. But okay. And we have witnesses proving that you fled from the scene. Who the hell witnessed this? The bus driver? Now, what does that tell us? Jeff knew it was no use. 
he could say him and Lou had been attacked. There was no proof that it was them who were attacked first. They couldn't say that they weren't fleeing because truth be told, they were. So Jeff couldn't defend himself or Lou. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do since it was he who would beat up the kids. Sir, it was me. I was the one who beat up the kids. Lou tried to hold me back, but he couldn't stop me. The cop looked at his partner and they both said, well kid, looks like a year in juvie. So you're telling me there's like no court date, like nothing, like they don't, they're just a cop like, oh yeah, juvie, yeah, juvie. Isn't there like, aren't you supposed to get like in front of a judge and like be sentenced for your crimes and have like a trial? Wait, says Lou. They all look to see him holding a knife. The officer pulled their guns and locked them on Lou. It was me. I beat up those little punks. Have the marks to prove it. He left it up his sleeve to reveal cuts and bruises as if he was in a struggle. Son, just put the knife down, said the officer. Lou held up the knife and dropped it to the ground. He put his hands up and walked over to the cops. No, Lou, it was me. I did it. Jeff had tears running down his face. Huh, poor bro, trying to take the blame for what I did. Well, take me away. The police led Lou up to the patrol car. This is so dramatic. Oh my God, it's like a soap opera. I love it. Lou, tell them it was me. Tell them I was the one who beat up those kids. Jeff's mother put her hand on his shoulder. Jeff, please, you don't have to lie. We know it was Lou. You can stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the cop car sped off with Lou inside. A few minutes later, Dad's, Jeff's dad pulled into the driveway, seeing Jeff's face and knowing something was wrong. Son, son, what is it? Jeff couldn't answer. His vocal cords were straight from crying. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. I shouldn't be laughing. I gotta compose myself. This is just so funny. <sighs> Instead, Jeff's mother walked his father inside to break the bad news to him as Jeff wept in the driveway. After an hour or so, Jeff walked back to the house, seeing his parents were both shocked, sad, and disappointed. Nobody went out to go check on him after an hour. These are shit parents, man. He couldn't look at them. He couldn't see how they thought of Lou, and it was his fault. He just went to sleep, trying to get the whole thing off his mind. Two days went by with no words from Lou at JDC. Again, I think that this would be a little bit of like a different process, but um, no friends to hang out with. Nothing but sadness and guilt. That is until Saturday, when Jeff is woken up by his mother with a happy, sunshiny face. Your kid's in juvie and you're so happy. Mm, okay, terrible parents. Jeff, it's the day, she said as she opened up the curtains and let light flood into the room. Oh, mom, no son. That's what I'm imagining. What, what's today? Oh, okay, that's not what he said. Ask Jeff as he stirs awake. Why, it's Billy's party. He was now fully awake. Mom, you're joking, right? You're not expecting me to go to some kid's party after. There was a long pause. Jeff, we both know what happened. I know this party can be the thing that brightens up the past few days. Now get dressed. His brother is in JDC for something that he didn't do. And you're just like, oh, party time. Jeff's mother walked out of the room and downstairs to get ready herself. He fought himself to get up. He picked out a random shirt and pair of jeans and walked downstairs. I want you want to bet it was a band shirt. I think it's a safe bet, right? Band shirt. He saw his mother and father all dressed up. His mother in a dress and his father in a suit. He thought, why the hell would they, why would they ever wear such fancy clothes to a kid's birthday party? Yeah, I'm also thinking the same thing. Like, listen, I'm all about fashion, but like time and place sometimes, right? Son, is that all you're going to wear? Said Jeff's mom. Better than wearing too much, he said. His mother pushed down that feeling to yell at him and hit it with a smile. Now, Jeff, we may be overdressed, but this is how you go if you want to make an impression. Once again, it's, not, it's a kid's birthday party, not a job interview, but I digress. Said his father. Jeff grunted and went up to his room. Ugh, fine. Nobody understands me. God. I don't have any fancy clothes, he yelled downstairs. Just pick something out, called his mother. He looked around his closet and what he could call fancy. He found a pair of black dress pants he had for special occasions and an undershirt. He couldn't find a shirt to go with it. He looked around and found only striped and patterned ones. Once again, striped, okay, like that's getting email and pattern. You can say band shirts. You can say band shirts. We all know he's emo. You could just say band shirts or like graphic horror tees. You can just say that. We know he's emo. Anyway. Finally, he found a white hoodie and put it on. I know I'm trying not to nitpick, but 
a white hoodie with dress pants. Talk about a fashion crime. At least wear a pair of black jeans and a white hoodie. What is wrong with you, Jeff? That is horrid. Listen, I humbly call myself a fashion icon. You're going to tell me that's what you wear. That is horrid. That is horrid. You don't wear dress pants and a hoodie. Oh my god. You're wearing that? They both said. And me as well. Like at least pair of, like at least wear a pair of black jeans with a hoodie. Like come on. His mother looked at her watch. Oh, no time to change. Let's just go. Are they down the street? Okay, whatever. So she said as they heard, she heard Jeff and his father out the door. They crossed over to the street over to Barbara and Billy's house. They knocked on the door and, and it appeared that Barbara, just like his parents, way overdressed. Okay, I guess something wrong with this neighborhood. As they walked inside, all Jeff could see were adults, no kids. The kids are in the yard, Jeff. How about you go and meet some of them, said Barbara. Jeff walked outside to a yard full of kids. They were running around in a weird cowboy costumes and shooting each other with plastic guns. He might as well be standing in a Toys R Us. Suddenly, a kid came up to him and handed him a toy gun hat. Hey, wanna play? He said, ah, no kid. I'm not too old for this stuff. The kid looked at him with that weird puppy dog face. Jeff, you're 13 years old. You're not too old. In my grown ancient adult age, if I was asked to play Nerf guns, Oh my god, I'd play the shit out of a Nerf gun war. You don't understand. I love playing with Nerf guns. Like, you know how, like, you don't, like, oh my god, you're not cool. Like, oh, not even Toys R Us. Like, what's wrong with Toys R Us, Jeff? You're so angsty. And whiny. Just enjoy the small things of life. Okay? Please, said the kid. Fine, said Jeff. He put on the hat and started to pretend to shoot at the kids. At first, he thought it was totally ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. But then he started to find it actually fun. It might not have been super cool. Who gives a shit? That is fun. But it was the first time he had done something that took his mind off of Blue. So he played with the kids for a while, until he heard a noise. A weird rolling noise. Then it hit him. Randy, Troy, and Keith all jumped over the fence on their scare points. Once again, are you in the neighborhood? Are these kids frickin' Tony Hawk? Jesus Christ. Jeff dropped the fake gun and ripped off the hat. Randy looked at Jeff with a burning hatred. Hello, Jeff is it? He said, we have some unfinished business. Jeff saw his bruised nose. What about his broken wrist? I think we're, I think we're even. I beat the crap out of you and you sent my brother to JDC. Burn! Foreshadowing. Ah! Randy got an angry look in his eyes. Oh no, I don't go for even. I go for winning. You may have kicked our asses that other day, but not today. Such oh my god, that's such a good line. The Randy in my universe also said that line to me. Something very similar. He's like, I don't go for even. I go for winning. Classic line. That's way better than go to sleep. Should I should have come up with that. I don't go for even. I go for winning. Oh my god. Underrated line. Why does someone talk about that? As he said that, Randy rushed at Jeff. They both fell to the ground. Randy pushed Jeff in the nose, a nose for a nose, and grabbed him by the ears and headbutted him. Jesus. Jeff pushed Randy off of him and both rose to their feet. Kids were screaming and parents were running out of the house. Troy and Keith both pulled out guns out of their pockets. Aren't they 12? No one interrupts or guts will fly, they said. Randy pulled a knife out on Jeff and stabbed him into the shoulder. Jeff screamed and fell to his knees. Oh my God, this is violent. Randy started kicking him in the face. Not his beautiful emo face, oh my god. After three kicks, Jeff grabbed his foot and twisted it, causing Randy to fall to the ground. Jeff stood up and walked towards the back door. Troy grabbed him. Need some help? He picked up Jeff by the back of his collar and threw him through the patio door. Are these kids WWE fighters? Oh my gosh. As Jeff tries to stand him, as Jeff tries to stand, he's kicked down to the ground. Randy repeatedly starts kicking Jeff until he starts to cough up blood. Is that a Marble Words reference? Oh my god, Tim. They're referencing you. <laughs> Come on, Jeff, fight me! He picks up Jeff and throws him into the kitchen. Randy sees a bottle of vodka on the counter and smashes the glass over Jeff's head. Fight! He throws Jeff back into the living room. Come on, Jeff. Come on, Jeff, look at me. Jeff glances up, his face riddled with blood. I was the one who got your brother sent to JDC. And, ha and now, you're just gonna sit here and let him rot in there for a whole year. You should be ashamed. Jeff starts to get up. He should be ashamed for other reasons. Oh, finally, you stand and fight. Jeff is now to his feet. Blood and vodka on his face. 
Once again, he starts to get that strange feeling. The one he hasn't felt in a while. Isn't it only been like a few days? Whatever. Finally, he's up, says Randy as he runs at Jeff. That's what it happened. Something inside Jeff snaps. His psyche is destroyed. All rational, uh, all rational thinking is gone. All he could do is kill. Oh, finally. It took a while, man. It's edgy emo kid. He's finally Jeff the killer, or is he? Does it really happen that quick where you just, I don't grabs Randy and pile drives him into the ground. He gets on top of him and punches him straight in the heart. The punches cause Randy's heart to stop. <laughs> what? As Randy gasps for breath, Jeff hammers down on him, punch after punch, blood gushing from Randy's body until he takes out one final breath <laughs> and dies. Everyone is looking at Jeff now. Oh yeah, the parents are still here. The parents, the crying kids, even Troy and Keith. Although they easily break from their gaze and point their guns at Jeff, Jeff sees the guns trained on him and runs for the stairs. Wait, also, did Jeff get stabbed in the shoulder? I guess it's adrenaline at this point and the, you know, the edginess flowing through his veins, but, like, did he not, like, he got stabbed in the shoulder, dude. Like, okay. We're gonna ignore that. As he runs, Troy and Keith let out fire on him, each shot missing. Jeff runs up to the stairs. He hears Troy and Keith follow up behind, and they let out their final rounds of bullets. Jeff ducks into the bathroom. He grabs a towel rack and rips it off the wall. Once again, where is the strength from this emo child coming from? Damn! Troy and Keith race in, knives ready. Troy swings his knife at Jeff, who backs away and bangs the towel rack into Troy's face. Oh my god. Jeff, Troy goes down hard, and now all that's left is Keith. He is more agile than Troy, though, and ducks when Jeff swings the towel rack. He dropped the knife and grabbed Jeff by the neck. Oh my gosh. Pushed him to the wall. A thing of bleach fell down on both of them. Just a thing of bleach from the top shelf. It burnt both of them, and they both started to scream. Jeff wiped his eyes as best as he could. He pulled back the towel rack and swung it into Keith's head. As he lay there, bleeding to death, he let out an ominous laugh. What's so funny? asked Jeff. Keith pulled out a lighter and switched it on. What's funny, he said, is that you're covered in bleach and alcohol. Jeff's eyes widened as Keith threw the lighter at him. As soon as the flames made contact with him, the flames ignited the alcohol in the vodka. When the alcohol burned him, the bleach bleached his skin. I guess I can't criticize the logistics of that because I also have paper white skin. But I, I digress. Jeff let out a terrible screech as he caught on fire. He tried to roll it out of the fire, but it was no use. The alcohol made him a walking inferno. He ran down the hall and fell down the stairs. Everybody started screaming as they saw Jeff. Now a man on fire. He's just a teenage boy on fire. He's not a man yet. He's practically an infant. Dropped to the ground. Nearly dead. The last thing Jeff saw was his mother and the other parents trying to extinguish the flame. That's when he passed out. Imagine if he died from that and that's just how the story ends. When Jeff woke up, he had cast wrapped around his face. He couldn't see anything, but he felt a cast on his shoulder and stitches all over his body. He tried to stand up, but he realized that there was a tube in his arm. Then he tried to get up and fell out and a nurse rushed in. Okay, I'm assuming the tube is an IV. IVs don't fall out of your arm that easily. I don't think that you can get out of bed just yet. Yeah, no shit. She said that she put him back in his bed and reinserted the tube. What? <laughs> Jeff sat there with no vision, no idea what his surroundings were. Finally, after hours, he heard his mother. The mom wasn't there by his side. His parents weren't there by his side the whole time. Okay. Honey, are you okay? She asked. Jeff couldn't answer though. His face was covered. He was unable to speak. Oh, honey, I have great news. After all the witnesses told the police that Randy confessed of trying to attack you, they decided to let Lou go. So did Randy rise from the dead? Isn't he dead? Didn't Jeff punch him so many times in the heart that he just died? So he rose from the dead and was like, oh, sorry, dude. I actually was the one who attacked Jeff. This made Jeff almost bolt up, stopping halfway, remembering the tube coming out of his arm. He'll be out by tomorrow, and then you two will be able to be together again. <laughs> See how long that lasts for. Jeff's mother hugs Jeff and says her goodbyes. The next couple of weeks were those where Jeff was visited by family. Then came the day where his bandages were to be removed. His family members were all there to see it and what he would look like. As the doctors unwrapped the bandages from Jeff's face, everyone was on the edge of their seats. They waited until the last bandage holding the cover over his face was almost removed. 
Let's hope for the best, said the doctor. He quickly pulls the cloth, letting the rest fall from Jeff's face. That is kind of cool to imagine. Jeff's mother screams at the sight of his face. Lou and Jeff's dad stare awestruck at his face. What a great parent. You can't even use the whole thing where like, oh, only a face a mother could love. Because even his freaking mother was like, ah, ugly. What? What happened to my face? Said Jeff. He rushed out of the bed and ran to the bathroom. Oh, but the tube at his arm. Oh, okay, whatever. He looked in the mirror and saw that the cause of the stress. His face. It's, it's horrible. That is very rude. I am gorgeous. His lips were burnt to a deep shade of red. His face was turned into a pure white color and his hair was singed brown to black because he's emo and it has to fit his look, right? You should have just dyed his hair. He slowly put his hand to his face. It had a weird sort of leathery feel to it now. He looked back at his family, then back at the mirror. Jeff, said Lou, it's not that bad. His mother screamed, of course it's that bad. Not that bad, said Jeff, it's perfect. His family was equally surprised. Jeff started laughing uncontrollably. His parents noticed that his left eye and hand were twitching. Jeff, are you okay? Okay? I've never felt more happy. <laughs> I can't do the laugh. Look at me. This face goes perfectly with me. Now I'm finally emo. He couldn't stop laughing. He stroked his face, feeling it, looking at the in the mirror. What caused this? Well, you may recall the <laughs> recap that Jeff was fighting Randy, something in his mind. His sanity snapped. Now he was left as a crazed killing machine that his parents didn't know. That's great. Doctor, said Jeff's mom, is my son all right, you know, in the head? His mother, oh yeah, he's fine. This behavior is typical for patients that have taken very large amounts of painkillers. If his behavior doesn't change in a few weeks, bring him back here and we'll take him, a, we'll give him a psychological test. Oh, thank you, doctor, Jeff's mother. Said as she went over to Jeff. Jeff, sweetie, it's time to go. Oh, God. Jeff looks away from the mirror. His face still formed into a crazy smile. Okay, mommy. <laughs> his mother took him by the shoulder and took him to get his clothes. This is what came in, said the lady at the desk. Jeff's mom looked down to see the black dress pants and white hoodie her son wore. Now they were cleaned of blood and stitched together. They didn't burn. Whatever. Jeff's mother led him to his room and made him put his clothes on. Then they left, not knowing that this was their final day of life. Okay, now we're getting to like, the good part. This is like, the, you know, the iconic. Like, when you think Jeff the killer. Later that night, Jeff's mother awoke to a sound coming from the bathroom. It sounded as if someone was crying. She slowly walked over to see what it was. When she looked into the bathroom, she saw a horrendous sight. Jeff had taken a knife and carved a smile into his cheeks. That's not horrendous. Again, I'm gorgeous, but all right. Jeff, what are you doing? Asked his mother. Jeff looked over at his mother. I couldn't keep smiling, mommy. It hurt after a while. Now I can smile forever. Jeff's mother noticed his eyes ringed in black. Jeff, your eyes. His eyes were seemingly never closing. He put eyeliner on. He finally figured out eyeliner. I couldn't see my face. I got tired and my eyes started to close. I burned out my eyelids so I could see myself forever. My new face. Jeff's mother slowly started to back away, seeing that her son was going insane. What's wrong, mommy? Aren't I beautiful? Yes, son, she said. Yes, you are. L let me go get daddy so he can see your face. She ran to her room and shook Jeff's dad from his sleep. Honey, get the gun. We she stopped and she saw Jeff in the doorway holding a knife. Okay, so your son is clearly going through like a psychotic break. He carved a smile into his face. He just came back home from like being burnt alive. Maybe instead of getting a gun, you should double check and make sure that your son's all right. He's clearly going through a psychotic break. Like parents of the year, this mother is awful. Like this poor kid. Jesus, this poor emo kid is clearly like he, He's going through a psychotic break. All things seriously. You're like, oh, get the gun. What the fuck is wrong with you? This is coming from me. It's coming from Jeff the Killer. That is bad. When even I'm like, you're a bad parent, dude. You're a bad person. Mommy, you lied. That's the last thing they hear as Jeff rushes them with the knife. Getting both of them. Or gutting both of them. His brother Lou woke up, startled by some noise. This is like, this is so iconic. 
He didn't hear anything else, so he shut his eyes and tried to go back to sleep. As he was on the border of slumber, he got the strangest feeling that someone was watching him. He looked up before Jeff, Jeff's hand covered his mouth. He slowly raised the knife, try, uh, ready to plunge it into Je uh, Lou. Lou thrashed here and there, trying to escape Jeff's grip. Shh, Jeff said. Just go to sleep. If you've ever wanted to hear a story with like authentic teenage angst, just got it. Reminds me of a simpler time when I was 13 years old. I was probably a handful. So thoughts. Interesting story, to say the least, you know, but it was definitely a fun, spooky story for Halloween. Oh, it was fun, you know? It's like, it's reminding me of a simpler time. Reminds me of being 13. I would say the real standouts of the story is how horrible Jeff's parents are. And how Lou is practically non-existent in the story. He's like a plot device. I, I guess how angsty and whiny Jeff is. And also that Randy, as much of an asshole as every version of him is. Kick-ass line. I don't go for even, I go for winning. Genius. I can respect that. So I hope that you guys all enjoyed this year's Halloween special. It was very fun to go back and read a different version of myself's story. But I hope that you guys all have a great, safe, and fun Halloween this year. I know I certainly am excited to hang out with the guys and all dressed as individual characters. So yes, enjoy your Halloween, everybody. And I hope that you guys enjoyed spending this Halloween special with yours truly.